This is Amy Chan from cakedecoratingschool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're going to be piping buttercream king protea flowers. It's broken down into segments, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. So let's get started with making our colors. We're going to make three today, and we're using American style buttercream, and we're going to use four liquid gel colors. Some royal blue. Oh, there we go lemon yellow, red red, and finally some neon bright pink. I'm going to start by making the color from my centers on my flowers and you can actually leave this white if you want to. I just like to add a touch of color because we're doing stuff on video and it helps it show up a little better and helps show some of the contrast. So I'm just going to actually make it a super light pink just because a lot of times you get the reflected color from the petals there but you could easily make it a nice light yellow or like a light green or you can just leave it white and that's actually a really great way to kind of vary up your protea flowers by just making different color combinations for the different parts. And I'm trying to go really light so I'm starting with really small little specks because I just want it to look like it's just got a little bit of color to it but not too much. And there we go. So we've just got a super kind of barely there light pink. Now we're going to make some yellow. Now we want it to have just a bit of a greenish tint, so I'm going to start with my lemon, do some nice specks, and then just take a very, very teeny tiny one of my royal blue. So just kind of that tiniest little hint towards the green. And if you end up a little too greenish, you can always add a little more yellow to help balance things out. And it'll just make your color a little more of a slightly intense hue. And I'm just going to bump it up just a tiny bit. There we go. So it's a nice citrusy yellow color that just has that hint of blue in it to take it slightly towards the green, but it's going to look beautiful against our other colors. And finally, we're going to make our pink. And we're going to use primarily red red to make this because I want it to have that kind of cool, almost salmon-y tone to it. So I'm just going to do some really nice big specks of that red red that I have out there. And then a couple of bright pink. And I want it to be kind of a nice medium tone. So it really kind of captures the overall color of those petals. They typically have some variation, so you can even leave it kind of um, a little under mixed if you want to. But I'm just gonna make a nice kind of medium tone. And I like where this is going. You can see the pink has that kind of different feel to it because we're really using the red red to create it. Just going to go a little more intense and then I think that'll be fantastic. And there we go. For this flower, we're using three decorating bags. They're all 12 inches. We fitted one with that light pink color with a coupler because we're gonna use it with more than one tip. And the others, we've just fitted directly with the tips. For our light pink, we're gonna start out using a number two. And we'll also use a number 12. For our citrusy yellow color, we're gonna use a number two as well. For our salmon pink, we're gonna use a number 61. This is a curved, petal tip. So let's talk about the techniques we're going to use to make our king protea flowers. The first one 
are just lines. So these are like any kind of lines that we normally like to do, kind of that top down, drop into place. You wanna start bag straight up down or nearly there, touch the surface, squeeze, and then let that line just drop into place. When you're ready to finish it, touch down, stop squeezing and pull away. And that's gonna give you a nice clean line. Our second is gonna also be with a number two tip and they're gonna be spikes. And you can see I've got my yellow in my bag and we wanna hold that bag straight up and down, just a little off the surface, squeeze and let your frosting connect to start to form a dot and then pull up while you're still squeezing. That gives you a fat little buildup to support your little spikes. For our petals, we're gonna use a number 61 tip and we're basically gonna do the same technique we did with our number two for our spikes. It's just gonna have a different shape because of the opening. So we're gonna hold the bag straight up and down, squeeze and let that frosting connect, build up a little bit, and then we're gonna pull up while we're still squeezing. And you can see then our spike has that flat, almost shovel-like shape to it, and it's slightly curved. And that's gonna give us those great petals for the outside edge of our protea. And the final thing we're gonna do is a dot. We wanna build up just a little bit of volume underneath as a base to get started with. And this is a great way to practice your dots because no one's ever gonna see it. So back straight up and down, squeeze and let that frosting connect into place. Since it's up off the surface, you can get nice volume. Then stop squeezing and circle around to finish it off. And that's gonna give us a little base that we can pipe on top of to build up our center. Now let's go over how we're gonna use the techniques we just reviewed to build our blossoms. We're gonna start out on our flower nail. We're gonna pipe a nice dot right there in the center and then we're gonna do our lines. We're just gonna pull one all the way around the outside edge of that dot and then we're just gonna swirl on top a little bit. This is gonna give us a tiny little dome there in the center that's gonna prep us for uh, building this protea flower. We want it to have just a little bit of domed volume there in the middle. Next, we're gonna switch the tip on our bag to our number two and we're gonna make those nice straight lines. So just starting at the outside edge, we're gonna pull towards the center and we're just gonna go all the way around and overlap. And this is gonna take a little bit of time, so it's a tiny bit tedious, but I find it's a little easier if you've actually already built up a little bit of volume with a larger tip so that you don't have to do as many to kind of build up that stacked shape. So we're gonna to come to all the way to the center first, and then we're gonna do a little second layer that's kind of just a little bit shorter. They kind of have these really tight petals towards the center, and some of them are really long and overlap in the center, and some of them will be a little shorter. And by building up those layers, you give it a more realistic look. We're then going to switch over to our bag with our nice little yellowish green in it, and we're gonna do some spikes all the way around the edge. And I like to do a little double layer. I pull one going slightly towards the middle and the second row going straight up. And this gives it a little bit of a natural flow and feel. Not everything's going exactly the same direction. Finally, we're gonna switch to our 61 with our great little salmon -y pink in it. And we're gonna come right next to the edge, right at the bottom of the nail, and we're going to pull those spikes up. And I like to just kind of follow the curve of the flower I have going to start with and just pull them at a slight angle out and then just kind of flick the tip towards the center a little bit so that they kind of curve straight up at the end. And it gives it a nice overall shape and feel. You can go around once with your pink, you can do it a second time if you need to. It's really up to you and how big you wanna make your blossoms. So let's get started. We're gonna practice one on our nail. I've got my bag with my super light pink in it. It's got its number 12 tip on it and we wanna be holding straight up and down, up off the surface, squeeze, and let that line connect so it blooms out and gives you a beautiful dot, which we're gonna finish off. And you can see that's starting to give us a nice little center there in the middle. We wanna make it a little bigger because these flowers are really nice and big. So we're just gonna go and right around that dot, pipe a line. If you need to, use your nail and turn. You can then go right on top, 
and just swirl it till you cover up your dot. And this will give you a nice larger, kind of softly domed shape. You can see it's got that nice soft curve to it that we can build up those center lines on top of. We've switched the tip on our bag of light pink to our number two, and we're gonna start piping our lines. I'm just gonna start here on this kind of top edge of the outside line and just go directly to the center to finish it. And I'm just gonna keep going. You want to go almost right next to each other and end right there in the center. If you have a miss, don't worry. The reason I use the same color underneath that I'm using for these lines is so that if you have a gap, a pop, a bubble, something that shows through from underneath, you're not really gonna see it once we're finished. Oh, and my butter buttercream has a lot of bubbles today. And don't worry if you get a buildup there in the center, that's actually what we want. You can see it'll start to kind of stack on top of itself. You're gonna do a couple of layers of these. And if I can get it to stop giving me air bubbles, that'll be fantastic. Every once in a while, you're just gonna get a batch that's got a lot of air bubbles. So I went over it once, I'm gonna go over it a second time and probably a third. We did our first layer of lines and you can see we're starting to get a peak in the center and that's exactly what we want. I'm gonna go over it another time just to kind of fill in some of those gaps, getting any of those places I missed and I'm just gonna pull them a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna kind of stop short of the middle there. And anywhere I have a little open space or I can still kind of see the base that I piped underneath, I'm just gonna pipe an extra little line. And you can see how it looks fuller and more filled in now. And then I'm gonna go over it a third time and just kind of go to the outside, over the outside edge, just a little bit, and make them even shorter. So it's just successively shorter lines on the outside edge just to build up the layers of kind of petals and you think longer and more tightly closed in the center and as we get layers built we're going to do shorter and shorter that way we don't cover up the ones in the center and it gives us this kind of feeling like it's kind of opening up a little bit next we'll switch to our little bag of our yellow color our nice little yellowish citrusy green and we're just going to pull some spikes so i'm going to go right at the end of my line so kind of right as my big old mound that i made changes direction and starts to go down and i'm just going to start there and i'm just going to pull in a little bit so give it a tiny little flick towards the center just at the end And if you pick up a little bit of that pink on the edge, that's just fine. That probably means you're doing a great job. And it's kind of like building a little wall of spikes around the outside edge. You just want them to go straight up or kind of curve to the center a tiny, tiny bit. And this is going to give us that look like these flowers are kind of slowly opening up. And just rotate your nail as needed to put it in a good position. When I'm doing stuff like this, I like to keep my hand in the same spot and just rotate the nail. That makes your little strokes quick. And you can see it's already starting to come to life and come to shape. Anywhere I need it to fill in, I'll go in and put a little second layer. Not as dense as the first, so not as tight together. 
and just pull straight up with these. That way you see I have some that are kind of curving slightly in and some that are going straight up. And finally, we're gonna use that great salmon colored pink we made with our number 61 tip. We're gonna hold that bag straight up and down. I'm gonna nest it so it's right against the curve, right, right there. Kind of pull it. If you need to pull the back of the bag out just a little bit so that you can really get it next to it. And when we pull up, we're gonna build our little mound and start pulling our spike, try to hug the edge and the curve of your little flower you've made. That's gonna give those spikes some support so you can pull them nice and long. And we're gonna go all the way around. And do those. And don't worry about them all being the same length or exactly the same. I like to do at least two layers of these. The first one kind of acts as a support for the second to get them even longer. So if you have a little gap between them, if they flick towards the center just a tiny touch, that's actually going to be really beautiful when we get it finished. So just get a last one in there for my first layer. And then I'm going to go in between for the second one. And it's going to be a little easier to do and to pull out just a little bit. looking gorgeous and anywhere I feel like it needs it anywhere it needs to be balanced out I'm just go in and put an extra petal it helps if you look kind of from a top-down view just get in there and put on any extra ones you need to just to give you a beautiful finished look that's all for this lesson. If you liked this video, try checking out some of our other flower series tutorials. If you have any questions, ideas, or suggestions, we would love to hear from you in the comments section.